You can get more done. You can. In a day, in a week, in a month, in a year than you even think is possible. It all starts with prioritization. It all starts with the big rocks in your life. And we'll get to that in a minute, but what happens if you're not prioritizing the most important things? What happens if you're letting your schedule control you? What happens if time management is something that every time you hear, it's like fingernails on a chalkboard right in front of you because you know you're failing every single day? Well, we all know what that feels like. You go home and you feel unsuccessful. You wonder why you spent all this time at work today and got nothing done. You're not anywhere near the level of success that you feel you should be because your time is being wasted in areas that don't represent where you want to be. You're wasting away the day, the week, the month. How many weekends go by and people say, I got to get these things done. It's my only time off. And Sunday comes around and not one thing was done. Not one. You didn't do anything you wanted to do. We all know that feeling, so we don't need to stay there very long. Everybody has done that, including me, on a regular basis. But here's what I found. What I found is if you do a couple of things, you can regain your control of your schedule. You can reprioritize things and you can be more productive than you ever thought possible. I get more done in weeks than, than most people do in months. And I'm not saying that to make myself look great, but I'm saying that because the secret's in the schedule, not me. It's all the things that I surround myself with that make it possible. I'm not, I'm not saying I have it all figured out. I'm saying that by surrounding myself in the right areas with the most important things, I can get a lot more done. I can feel more productive. I can sleep really, really hard at night because I'm tired. And at the end of the day, it all starts with the big rocks. In, in my book, I actually use an analogy that I've seen a million times, and it's a jar. And in that jar, you can only fit a certain amount of things, okay? The rocks, the big rocks, if you start out by putting those big rocks into that jar, everything else starts to fit. So let's talk about what big rocks are. First of all, big rocks are your relationships, the most important people the things you love doing the most, the tasks you love in life the most. Do you love exercising? Do you love working out and being healthy? Do you love your dad or your mom? Do you, do you have the time to go to lunch once a month with one of them, both of them? Do you have a dinner with the family every night or once a week or how many times? What's the big rocks in your life? Usually it's not social media. Usually that's the sand right? And in between the rocks, there are pebbles. And the pebbles filter in, in and around the rocks. And they don't quite take up as much space when the big rocks are in there because they can filter in and around it. These are maybe the work relationships. These are may maybe the work dinners you have to do. These are the things that you actually enjoy doing, but maybe there's some of the things that you don't want to prioritize first. Then there's the sand, the space, the in-betweens, the watching TV, the watching YouTube, the fiddling on Instagram and Facebook and Snapchat and TikTok. You know how many people talk about not having time to have dinner with friends? I just don't have any time to go out to dinner with them. I haven't seen them in five years, but I have no time. I just can't do it. Can't fit it in. Yet they're spending two, three hours a day on social media. And you know, we actually have this awesome tool on the iPhone that shows me my screen time. And I can go back and I look at it. I have found personally that there are times where you get caught in that cycle, right? And you're just flipping through and I'm watching soccer video after soccer video and I'm, I'm sending them to the kids and then I'm, there's a funny video right in between that, that right when I'm ready to turn off my phone and get off of it, that hilarious video pops up. Now I gotta send that to three friends and I look at one more because it was so funny and, and how much time has gone past. Now, if that's the sand in the jar and you're using that in, in break moments, when you're in the elevator, you know, when you're, when you're sitting waiting for an appointment, 
when you have 10 minutes to kill and nothing else you absolutely have to do, those are important to separate, to see how your friend's kids looked at Halloween or Christmas or, or whatever it may be. It's awesome to be able to share those moments and a part of my day, a part that I enjoy. But it doesn't have to be the pebbles or the big rocks. And what you're finding is when people say they can't have dinner with their best friend, which is something they really wanted to prioritize, they're missing it because they're letting the sand go in the jar first. The sand's going in first, then the pebbles, then there's only time for one big rock. That's not the way life is supposed to be lived. Time management is about prioritizing the biggest rocks first. If your children are the most important part of your life, prioritize it. Prioritize what you think is most important. Maybe it's just having dinner with the family three times a week, sitting around the dinner table together. Now, if you're like me and you have soccer practices 90% of the time or, or work functions or your, your spouse has something going on, I mean, that could be a challenge. But we've done a really, really important thing in our family and prioritize that as a big rock. Even when everybody else is busy, we try to have a few moments where we sit and eat together. Every Sunday in my family, my extended family, my mom and dad, we go to their house. We have Sunday dinner with my brother, his fiance, my sister, her two children, my entire family. We invite friends and other families sometimes that Sunday dinner. That is every single Sunday. But there are exceptions. There are times where I'm traveling or someone else is traveling. Like we miss it, but we keep it as a habit. We've prioritized that as a very important part of our family's life. And because we prioritized it, we actually created a habit out of it. And we created the habit, now it feels weird when we miss it. Has that ever happened to you with something that's important to you, like working out? You have to do it for an extended period of time, but when you do it, you actually feel bad that you missed it. A part of your day that's supposed to be so important is not prioritized. And you feel it, you recognize it, you know it. You know when the sand is getting in the way of the big rocks. You can identify it. So prioritizing the most important things and starting with these three or four things this week are the most important things. These few people are the most important people in my life. This topic is something I wanna work on or I wanna read about and I wanna prioritize it. That goes in your schedule first. Then you start getting the pebbles and the pebbles are all the in-betweens and we understand that, but we don't let the sand lead us. And we all find moments where the sand is leading us. There are days in the last three weeks where the sand has been the most important part of my day and I have failed. I'm not perfect at it, but I have prioritized to the point where I've done some other things to help me be better at it. Here's another one. I've surrounded my schedule with things I love doing. Here's a big one. When you love what you're doing, it's easy to prioritize it. If you hate what you're doing, it's really hard to prioritize it. So it makes you self-evaluate where you're spending your time. Are you spending your time on the things you are great at? Or are you spending your time on the things you're not so great at? And when you're prioritizing those big rocks and you're great at it, you can also get everybody in and around you to help. If you share that with your partner, your spouse, your family, these are the things that are most important to me. They can hold you accountable. They can help you. I have, I have, I am blessed to have an EA that, that spends their time helping me on a regular basis prioritize my schedule. And when it gets out of control or something changes or the sand starts to infiltrate the pebbles and the pebbles infiltrate the rocks, we flip it. We pause and we flip it. And we make sure that we rebook the schedule the way it's supposed to be. It doesn't mean that there aren't times where there are exceptions. There are always going to be exceptions. It's not going to be perfect. And perfection is actually what keeps people from having a good schedule, good time management. So here's the key. If you want to get more done, first of all, you're going to feel more successful if you prioritize the most important things. So that automatically is going to give you good energy to go into the next day. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to start to actually evaluate what's on that schedule. So when you've prioritized it all and you've written it all out, you got to look back at it. You got to look back at it on a regular basis. I find it very, very powerful every day to look back at the one thing that I got accomplished that I'm very proud of. It's a simple thing for me, 
But if I could say, well, at least I got that one thing done, that one priority, I feel accomplished. Sometimes I actually even put a gratitude portion on there where I'm saying, okay, I'm not only thankful that I did this, but I'm grateful that it led to these other things. Or I prioritized this and because of that, I got these great moments out of it. This past weekend, um, I, we didn't have any soccer. We didn't have anything we had to do. And I went outside and played soccer in our backyard with our boys for hours. It was great. I didn't do anything. I had so much work I had to get done. I had so many things on my calendar. I had year-end planning and, and my reflection time all scheduled. And I threw it all away because the most important thing to me is my family. The most important thing, my number one priority are my children and my family. My wife, the kids, how can I make that most important? Sometimes I have to actually create that space to just be able to do it and put everything else aside to remind myself that that's the most important thing. When you're making your schedule and you prioritize things, here's another thing we have to be mindful of. Here's a couple of tips. These aren't groundbreaking changes you have to do, but maybe some tips that will help you be more successful. Number one, set it and create a schedule that you can actually keep to and create the discipline around it. Don't change it every week. Don't change it all the time. Maybe Mondays and Fridays are planning days. Monday helps you get started. Every Monday, you start off by evaluating the most important rocks for the week. And every Friday, you go in and evaluate what you got accomplished. But you have to find days where if you meet with clients or customers, maybe Tuesdays and Thursdays are the days that you do most of it, or it's every afternoon. But create some continuity in your schedule, some discipline. Next, always find time for transitions. This is something I failed at dramatically in my career because I think I can do everything. I made the statement in the beginning and I believe it. You can do more than you think you possibly can and I do it all the time. And sometimes I do it to exhaustion. Here's how you stay from being overwhelmed. You keep from being overwhelmed. You keep from being exhausted. You create transitions, moments where you breathe. You can't have a 12 o'clock lunch and an 11 o'clock meeting. You go right into the 12 o'clock lunch. There was no time to go to the bathroom. There was no time to take a breath. What if you have to leave for lunch? You have a lunch hour. You have to leave for lunch. Now you have to go get your lunch. You have to order it. You have to get it. You have to come back. You have to eat it. Now you're 10 minutes late. You took an hour and 10 minutes. Maybe you have your lunch predetermined and it's waiting for you when you, when you have the 12 o'clock hour shift. Or maybe you just have lunch start at 12.15 to 1.15. Maybe it's 12.30 to 1.30. But you create gaps and transitions that you know will make you successful. I know that I can, I'm a sprinter. I love to sprint. I could sprint all day, but if I sprint without resting, I'm exhausted at the end of the day and I can't think. And guess what I don't have time and energy for? The people I love the most. My family. So I got to create transitions. And transitions for me are sometimes 10 to 15 minutes. 10 to 15 minutes before anything. I also factor in travel time. How many times have you built a schedule and you didn't factor in the amount of time it actually takes to get from one place to another? Someone did an appointment at my house for my garage the other day and they said they had to be in Smithfield. And I said, that's a long trip. And they said, yeah, I just looked it up. It's about 45 minutes. Well, they had to be there well before 45 minutes. It was not good planning. The reality is if we plan properly with transitions, you have time to breathe. You have time to pause. You have time to reflect. We've done a video on reflection. Make sure you catch that video and you review it because having a moment or a pause or a transition actually gives you built-in time in your day to reflect and respond versus reactions. Here's another thing. Surround yourself with people that want you to be successful, not people that are going to cram your schedule with crazy. If you have people that are helping you with your schedule, or demanding of your time, make sure they know the boundaries. Set clear parameters of what you're willing to do during certain times. Big one, time block. And don't just time block for things that you have to do, but time block for space. I find having to time block for actual time to think for time to not do anything allows me to be more productive in a day than anything else sometimes. I do my best thinking in the morning. I do not book anything first thing in the morning. 
I absolutely have to get certain things done, but I don't always know what those things are. So having a little bit of space to get some things done that pop up, like paying a deposit on something, uh, taking the kids to school that I didn't expect to, there's just gaps that allow me to be more successful. How can that make you more successful? How can you take transitions and time blocking and turn it into successful patterns of time management? The last thing you need to do is create a habit of reviewing. Review, grade yourself, give yourself an idea of what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong and be willing to adjust it. It's taken me 20 years to get the schedule I have today, but for about a decade, I've had Monday and Friday as planning days. Now, it doesn't mean I don't record some videos on a Friday. It doesn't mean I don't go and, and attend a school function with the kids on a Friday, but I definitely make time to plan every Monday and Friday. Every Sunday night, I review my schedule for the week before I start the week. Guess what? I don't wake up anxious. I don't wake up excited. I don't wake up nervous. I don't wake up not knowing what's coming. I have taken the time to evaluate it. I actually now take the time to look at month by month. I still use one of those big, huge desk calendars and I have it in front of me all the time. And so when I'm sitting at my desk, I can actually have a glance of everything that's coming up. Sometimes you wake up and you have a trip planned or something's come up and you didn't even know it was right around the corner. It allows me to be prepared. You have to review and, and really reflect on the schedule. Look at it ahead of time. Look at it at the end of the week. How successful were you? What are the most successful things you did? Did you win with your priorities? Did you fail? Can you learn from it? How can we adjust course? Time management is about this. You can get more done in a day, in a week, in a month, in a year than you ever dreamed possible if you make it something you work at, if you make it something you practice, if you actually prioritize your schedule. But make sure you're putting your love where you put your time. Because most of us in our lives find ourselves putting our time into something that we don't love as much as the things we actually do love. Make that adjustment, make that change, prioritize love and time and where they go and you're gonna find way more success and a whole lot more can be done in that day. If you like these types of videos, check out these above. There are so many more just like this that I think you're gonna like.